Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Tom Wells here. Today is Friday, August the 10th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Your first daily dose of happy for this beautiful Friday. And I imagine everybody uh, working in the work week is excited because the weekend's almost here. You get to get away from work, get to get out and do stuff and have a good time. So it's one more opportunity. I mean, it's easier than Mondays for most people to get excited. Fridays we can get excited about I don't know why, Tom, but but it's true. It's like you know the work week is over, and and it's somehow easier. It should be easy every day, shouldn't it? Yeah, really. Uh, it is actually easy every day. I've I've had so much of my life where I haven't had to conform to the work week, and it, I actually a little bit learned to not play the game of like, oh, it's Friday or it's Monday, you know. Mm, right, right. But it still affects me. I was I'm kind of amazed at how long that what do they call that 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 field that morphic field they say of of like the days of the week is a morphic field, you know, that the feeling you have about each day. And I see it's such an illusion. And yet, boy, was that gr- drilled into me when I was a kid, you know, that Friday means, you know, cause that's when you get out of school or that's when you get out of work. Mm-hmm. And of course it seems like a big deal. Then you have these two free days, right there. I'm free now. And then, but Sunday, it's not quite free because you start feeling that the chains are going to be put on you again on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I hate, I hate that way of thinking, but I, I generally don't that much anymore. Yeah, but I've gotten boy. better at being away from it. Like you, I haven't been working a, a nine to five in a long time because I've been self-employed. But even so, I still I still work a, a Monday to Friday schedule. And as a self-employed, self-employed person, I often work weekends, too. Which mm-hmm. actually makes it worse in some ways, but <laughs> <laughs> working um, on your big day off. Yes. That's right, yeah. But the, the the fact is that I still feel that pull. I still feel that that the uh, sense of oh, you know, God, the work week is coming up, or oh, God, the the weekend is here. How good! I'm going to get a chance to relax. It's so good, you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, like on Monday when we start the podcast, I always start off with how great Monday is, just to remind myself of it. And remind mm-hmm. our listeners, of course, but I'm like everybody else, and, and you are too. I mean, we need to remind ourselves all days are good. They're wonderful days. The funny thing is that nothing even exists that's even remotely like what we think it is. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's true. All there is is just this continual moment that's taking place, and we we turn it into hours and days and of the week, and we label it months and mm-hmm. every month has its character. Now there are seasons. I mean, of course, you know, and they do feel different. So, but it's just interesting. All the stuff we uh, create as superstructures over something that maybe is a whole lot more simple and a whole lot less able for us to understand even what it is. You know, it's, it's, I've been hearing this stuff lately about how we don't have a clue what the universe really is. You know, it's such a massive huge organism of transformation taking place constantly that nobody knows what it really is, you know, because if when you go into these altered states, I've been studying that a little bit about, you know, going into say a DMT experience or just an altered state on any kind of a psychedelic plant. It's like people come back saying, you know, that the universe is nothing like what we think it is. It's just, you might as well suspend all belief. It's something much more miraculous than we even have the slightest idea. Well, that, that's the key word, belief, isn't it? Because mm-hmm. you, you said suspend belief. I'm not sure that we can uh, always suspend belief or even do no. it on demand necessarily. No, no, I can't. Yeah, but uh, but truly everything that we experience is heavily, heavily influenced by our beliefs. And, and in fact, that's one of the things that Abraham teaches. A belief is a thought that you think over and over again. The more you think it, the more you believe it. Mm-hmm. which is both encouraging and a little bit uh, alarming at the same time <laughs> because yeah. we can make ourselves believe some crazy stuff or we can make ourselves believe good stuff. It's entirely up to us which we're going to focus on, but yeah. uh, we can really do it either direction. Um, there's a great deal of value, though, in focusing on the stuff that we like that makes us feel good. Um, in fact, I earlier this week, uh, I can't remember which day it was, I was doing a little searching around. I was... I was uh, Looking into various ways to increase the uh, the reach of the podcast, get more and more people to find out about it. Because uh, mm-hmm. I know when people find out about it, they subscribe and they love it. The numbers are really, really clear about that. But just, you know, so many people don't know about it. So I was, you mm-hmm. know, looking around, seeing what I could do. And I, I stumbled across somebody who had uh, a blog where he was basically, or I guess it was a she, she was basically panning the law of attraction, saying, oh, no, this is a bunch of nonsense and so forth, a bunch of woo-woo. Yeah. 
and oh. she was she was going to prove how everything about it is not true. Now I didn't bother with the podcast; I didn't want to listen to it. I had better things to do with my time. But <laughs> but in her description of her podcast, she wrote something really curious. She mm -hmm. said that one of the biggest problems is people don't question their good feelings. Mm. They're good feeling ideas. They don't question them. I'm thinking, why would you want to question a good feeling idea? Mm. And I even commented on her page, like, why would you want to? I don't understand. Why would you want to question a good feeling idea? It doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you do that? The only reason well, I, I could think of, and, and this one does actually kind of fit in with what we're talking about here. The only reason I can think of is to doubt yourself. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's well, what we do. Yeah, and I know that from the from the eyes of a lot of psychology, from what I can tell, they what they they say is that if you're too much into what feels good, you're bypassing the parts of yourself that you've got into denial now that are actually in pain. And so, if there's parts of you that are, you know, this belief that there's like parts of us for one thing, that's a belief, you know, and that there's parts of us that are in pain, and that you know we need to suss out those things you know, get them out of the holes that they're hiding in, look at them, go through that pain, and then we're free of that stuff eventually. But but, but, but listen to that, I mean, what you just said. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. and I, I know you don't agree with it. I'm just saying, listen to what you just said. You have to, to be suspicious of a good feeling thought because right. it might be denying something that's right. bad feeling. Whoa, right. hold on a second here. <laughs> yes, well, let's voluntarily. Not, let's voluntarily do it. the results in your life, you know. When oh you're not goodness. getting the results in your life that you want, you know, then sometimes, you know, you turn to, at least I do, I'll, ter I'll turn to anything that'll help me get the freedom of, yeah, the freedom of consciousness that I want. The, the sense of that, the fact that I'm not hindered in my ability to create the life I want to allow in the good that I want in my life. It's just that it's interesting that some people think, and, and I can understand it, that you've got to go the opposite way to get in the direction you want to go, or you sort of, you've got to feel deeply the grief in order to have the, uh, the, the opposite of that, you know? And it's sort of like Abraham talks about that a lot. Actually, they say, if you don't, if you don't see, you don't appreciate the good things, if you don't know the opposite of them. And that's why we live in a world of contrast, you know, so that it is important to be really comfortable with the opposite of, of all the things that we, uh, attain to, you know, I attain to feeling good all the time, but it's important to understand that without the bad feelings, we wouldn't understand how good, how good, good feels. Well, I, I think you're, you're right about that, but I think there's a really important point being overlooked here. Um, mm -hmm. And you kind of alluded to it. I thought you were going to go there, but you didn't. So I'm going to bring it in. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. The really important point is yes, something like psychotherapy can be really valuable if you're in a negative place, if you're depressed, if you're, you know, dealing with some sort of major trauma, if you're dealing with stuff that just seems to be holding you back, you never get into the good feeling place. And so the good stuff never actually happens. I can see how that could have value. But you said something, maybe you said it by accident, but you said something that was really interesting that I think is actually true for many people in the field of psychotherapy. And that mm -hmm. is, if you're feeling good, it means you are in denial of what you're feeling bad about. So you should now start feeling bad so you can work your way back out. And I'm thinking, are you out of your minds, you people? And I know there are people who advocate that, but that's just plain crazy. And, and that's a funny thing to say about a psychotherapist. But, you know, any psychotherapist who's claiming that if you're feeling good, it means that you are in denial about something that you're not feeling good about. And so you have to make yourself not feel good long enough to explore the thing you're not feeling good about so you can feel good. I'm sorry. That's crazy. That's crazy talk. The purpose of psychotherapy is to, is to help pull you out when you're feeling bad, not to pull you down when you're feeling good. Right, right. No, it's only in the light of if if it's sort of like you, you're just putting a happy face on everything and you're saying, well, by having a happy face on everything, then I'll, I'll somehow end up happy. And it's sort of like Abraham said, if, you, if your gas gauge is on empty and you get a little happy sticker out and cover over your gas gauge – then you can just keep driving. And that's not true. You're going to run out of gas. And so if you know in your consciousness that you're, you're smiling as much as you can, but you know, those smiles that look like, you know, their rubber bands are holding them in place. It's like, it's not a real smile coming from a real knowing on the inside that you're truly happy. Well, that, that raises the question in my mind. 
can we mm-hmm. truly categorize that person as feeling good? Right. Yeah. And, and that's, I think, all that I'm talking about is that if if I'm, you know, I mean, I might be convincing myself that I'm happy, which is fine. You know, in this particular moment, I'm happy. But if later on, you know, like the proverbial poop hits the fan, you know, and things are really falling apart in my life. Well, sometimes it's like I have to ask myself, how much am I hyping myself into believing that I'm happy when really there's something that I'm 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 that's deeper in there that's that's in pain that's deeper in there that's in grief or sorrow or anger or something that's really not getting addressed and um that's why I don't know when I work with clients I want them to look at how they really feel about things and to be able to just like that last podcast we had was about making peace with where you're at making peace with where you're at and to me that means you know you always always are able to accept the fact that, Hey, this is how I feel. Like if you wake up in the middle of the night, like I do sometimes and I'm, and something's really bothering me. Um, I admit that, okay, I really feel bothered by that. And then I, I often will go back to bed and sit and feel, what is this I'm feeling? You know, where, you know, where is it coming from or where am I feeling it in my body? And then I let it, I let it dissipate by just noticing it and giving it love, you know, that whole thing that every part of us is welcome and needs to be embraced and loved, even the parts that are terrified, terrified or angry or whatever. And so it's just the difference between not glossing over stuff. I think that's what it comes down to, to me to not pretending like it doesn't exist. Okay. I can, I can appreciate that. I think there's some value to that. I do think it's really important though, to recognize that it is not up to the therapist to decide whether or not the client or the the patient or whatever is feeling good. No, it's, I don't. And, I don't and, so. and yet, I would I would suggest I've had experience with people who who have talked to me in this way. I would suggest that there are many therapists who mm-hmm. will decide for themselves that the 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 smile that they see on somebody else's face is a fake smile, and therefore that person is in pain and needs help. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you said well, it very nicely. You said, uh, you know, you, you, somebody, you can tell somebody has that fake smile on their face. Mm-hmm. To me, that it, at most, at most, that's an invitation to ask the question, are you feeling okay? It is not an, an invitation to say, ah, I know that you're not feeling okay. And that to me is a really important distinction because mm-hmm. I find that there are so many people, professionals with letters after their names, who will make the assumption that that person is unhappy. The, the better ones, in my opinion, won't make the assumption. They'll say, I, I suspect it, but I'm not going to make the assumption. I'm going to ask about it. And then they'll yeah. ask how you feel about it. That's what good therapists do, I That's think. Right. They, really, they really check every step of the way, whether or not what they're perceiving is accurate or not, or perhaps that the technique they want to work with with that client is actually going to be a good direction to go in. You know, right. they... they they have to really feel out based hopefully on years of experience and really good training, whether or not that person, you know, they've got a handle on that person's uh, particular thing. And the funny thing about it all is that from the point of view of law of attraction, whatever we focus on, we're going to get more of. So if you're with a therapist who uses a particular psychological technique to help their clients, they're going to see through those eyes no matter what. You know, they can't not see through that lens. Maybe that's how they've done the work on themselves and gotten the results they want. So they're going to see their client through those eyes. You know? <laughs> and uh, so then clients have to, you know, decide, oh, I want to go along with this therapist's view of how they're seeing my unfolding of my angst or my worry or my fear or my anger, you know. And the question is, does it, does it help? Does it get to the root of the problem? And and does the client end up feeling truly transformed by it? Because it says true transformations that matter, right? True transformations do matter. Um, we I, we were talking about that before the uh, the podcast began today. I was telling you how um, I woke up in the middle of the night last night about one a.m. and I was just not feeling good. I was just feeling really miserable. I don't mean I was feeling physically ill, but I probably would have been if I stayed on that track. But, but I was just, mm-hmm. I was feeling depressed about what was going on in life and so forth. Mm-hmm. And I knew that wasn't good. So, you know, I started doing some of the modalities that we've talked about, you know, focusing on breathing and, 
and trying to focus on things that felt good and all that kind of stuff. And, they, and I wasn't able to get there. I, was, I still found myself not being able to stick to my plan of focusing on what felt better. So mm -hmm. I actually just got up, came into um, the, the room that I use as my office where I do uh, the podcast from. And I have a mirror on the wall there that I use to do my mirror exercises. So I got up and came in here and did my mirror exercises at 1 a.m. Because normally I do that in the, you know first thing in the morning. <laughs> I couldn't wait that long. I needed to do it now so I could go back to sleep, right? Sure. And started doing those mirror exercises. And within about five minutes, I was feeling a whole lot better. And of course, for those who don't know mirror exercises, what, what I'm really doing is looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. I appreciate you. Just, you know, a flow of appreciation to myself to kind of reinforce, I am really okay. I'm really a good person. I feel good. And as I did that, I could feel myself feeling better. I was literally feeling better yeah. to, the, to the point where five minutes later, I was ready to go to sleep. And when I woke up this morning, I still wasn't really feeling great, but I was feeling better than I had. I came right in here and started doing the mirror exercises again. I figured, well, I didn't do them enough. I did them mm -hmm. some, and I got some benefit, enough to go to sleep, mm -hmm. but I still hadn't done enough. So I started doing some more this morning, and I felt even better. Mm -hmm. and, and just reinforces for me, we, we can certainly have stuff that blocks us. We can certainly have stuff that frustrates us. But also, a lot of it is, if we're, if we're, what we're trying to do is to climb out, a lot of it is how dedicated are we to climbing out? It's like uh, what Yoda said in The Empire Strikes Back. Do or do not. There is no try. And that really is true. I'm finding it over and over and over again. There are times where I'll say, well, I'll try to do it. And when I do that, inevitably, I fail. Mm -hmm. Inevitably, I just don't get to the place. Mm -hmm. But when I commit myself, you know, apply some willpower, apply some determination. When I do that and really go after doing it until I feel better and not stopping until I feel better or, or if this particular modality doesn't work then switch to another one just keep going until i finally get into that good feeling place when i do it with determination i get there mm -hmm. i get there and the feel better place in that much i do know the feel better place always produces better results i am certain yeah. of that so i i understand what the psychotherapists are saying i think there is some value to um not you know to to, to paying some attention to what the block is and trying to root it out but I also think there's a whole lot of value to the modalities that we talk about where the law of attraction is concerned and where being a deliberate creator is concerned. Because so much of the time when we don't get the result we're looking for, I would say 100% of the time, it's because we really didn't apply ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, well, applying ourselves is huge. And, and just breaking up those patterns of... Um... Like, you know, when you use emotional tapping, which, you know, hopefully people know what that is, but we'll describe it again. Well, it's a it's a modality that's being used by thousands and thousands of people now of um, you know, you tap on six or seven places on your, you know, like top of your head, the area underneath your nose and your top of your chest and uh under your armpits and <laughs> you tap in these places um as you're saying certain things like uh common one is you know even though even though i woke up at one in the morning and i feel really upset um, i still know that within me i'm truly connected to source and and i really am source and that my life is actually designed to work well and i'm going to allow myself to feel better and, and in fact i'm beginning to feel better right now and as you're saying those things you're tapping these spots and apparently what they've found is that this is a an, an interrupt of the meridian, the, you know, the flow of energy in your body. And those, when you do those, those interrupts, or you could say they're stabilizers, you know, it brings your consciousness um, back into alignment. Really, it's just about getting in alignment with source. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty much the same thing. And so, you know, it, I noticed I, I watched this uh, movie on the Gaia channel uh, about, about emotion. And I noticed how, each of the different people being interviewed of the seven or eight people that they show consistently throughout this hour and 25 minute movie, um, that they all have a, a way that they're approaching the idea of dealing with this deeper wounded aspects of the human being, you know, of, or you feel so much angst or fear or anger and worry and these things. And they, but that by everything from tapping to, muscle testing and all these different ways that they they can bring a person around to feeling better 
And I just saw how it's everybody wants to get back to feeling better. And that's really the thing. So it's, do you, it's the question is how deep do you have to go into the pain in order to get around to feeling better? And today's topic in the, in the podcast is conspiracy theories. And, you know, I have a couple of good friends or f- friends that are heavily into conspiracy theories and it, and it sort of freaks me out when I'm with them because I, I feel like, you know, that their consciousness is affected by this level of angst, you know, worry around these things. And, and the feeling that there's all these people out there who are conspiring to screw us over, you know, in all these different ways, you know, they really are, you know, I guess getting together as these massive teams of people and sitting in, in hidden think tanks and coming up with ways to really, really screw people over and, and then going out and doing it. And therefore, you know, we see these things like, um, you know, the Sandy Hook massacre didn't ever really happen or all the fires in California are happening by super weaponry that's being tested on our own citizens to get ready for the apocalypse and all these different theories that are out there. And, But, you know, I have to ask myself, what's at the bottom of that stuff? You know, what's at the bottom of it seems to be just an incredible expectation that our external environments are incredibly controlled by fearful elements and, and by malicious elements and that we have to steal ourselves and protect ourselves and against um, this stuff by exposing it and talking about it. And, you know, otherwise um, just, I guess it's the exposing of it and that somehow we're going to get to the bottom of it. And then we're going to get rid of these people that somehow want to destroy us. And I don't doubt that there's some, some people that make plans against others and maybe a lot more than I know, but to have my life even have that element in it, it just hurts. It hurts, you know. Mm. And I, so I wanted to talk about it because I feel so much sadness inside to think that others feel that things are so out of control. It's, I guess, you could get that same way by just focusing on what's going on in the current administration, you know, and just feel how how horrible it all is, you know, and all these laws being reversed and changed and let's get rid of the endangered species act and let's get rid of the clean air and the clean water and the, the standards of, you know, pollution from car automobiles. And let's, let's reverse everything, you know, and it's sort of like, it's devastating. If you focus on all that stuff, it's devastating. It, it, if that becomes your life. Um, and so it comes all again, this whole conversation comes back to, Where do we really want our focus to be and what do we really believe in? Is the universe actually a a benevolent and benign place or is it fraught with horrible, you know, consequences? (laughs) And I think the the answer is yes. (laughs) It's fraught with horrible consequences? Well, I think it's both. I think the answer, that's why I said, I think the answer to your question is yes. It's not one or the other, it's yes. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) I mean, but which is the greater? You you talk about conspiracy theories. I mean, when you were first talking about it, literally I thought of a room full of snidely whiplashes with their black hats and their black coats (laughs) and their pencil thin (laughs) uh, mustaches rubbing their hands together like, oh, we're about ready to screw the people again. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, and and apparently there are people that have (laughs) power play, you know, they're doing power plays, you know. But the, the, the thing that people forget about snidely whiplashes is that snidely whiplashes don't work unless they're a little nails. <laughs> <laughs> it just, they just don't work. Victims. The right. only way that, that, that you can have a snidely whiplash is, is to have a little nail. And a little right. nail, little nail is actually the epitomization of, of being a victim. Right. She is the ultimate victim who has to be saved by Dudley do right. <laughs> right now, a lot of our listeners don't know what you're talking about. That's true. Yeah, sorry, we're we're, we're showing our our age here, but this was an old cartoon from the 1950s and 60s, really. Um, Dudley Do Right, and, and it was one of the, the most stupid 
cartoons you've ever seen in your life but it was the same theme over and over again dudley do was a a canadian mounted mountie who didn't have a whole lot of brains but he was just full of valor and nobility and uh little nell was his girlfriend and uh snidely whiplash was the evil black hat guy who would constantly capture little nell tie her to a railroad track so she could be run over by a train so that dudley do could come in and save the day at the last second and not only was the theme of the store of the show so absurdly ridiculous, but the drawing was bad too. I mean, it was just not even good cartooning. It was just the animation was poor, but, but it did have a run for a while on uh, Saturday morning TV. Saturday mornings, of course, on oh, television. Yeah, I watched it a lot that's of when time. Uh, that's when the the kid cartoons came on. That was one of the kid cartoons. Yeah. But it was the same thing over and over again. There was Snidely Whiplash doing his you know, dastardly deeds. Isn't that where the phrase came from? I think Dashley Deeds yeah, came from that, from that yeah, cartoon. Right. Yeah. I think so. And, and, and Dudley Do Right, who really was not the brightest bulb in the box. He was just not a smart guy <laughs> at all. I mean, he was so easily deceived by Snidely Whiplash. <laughs> but, but he would show up at the last possible yeah. second and rescue Little Nell. I mean, <laughs> He had a great voice, too. He did. <laughs> it was like this British theatrical voice or something like that. It was great. I just, yeah. I'll oh, save well. you! Yeah, right. I'll save you now. <laughs> but, yeah. but that's what I'm thinking about when you talk about conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories are really about being a victim. The yeah. people who espouse conspiracy theories are espousing victimhood. They're basically saying, I am powerless before the horrible actions of other people that I don't like. I don't like mm. what they're doing. I don't like what they're saying. And I am terrified of it. And I think everyone else should not only dislike what they're doing, but be terrified of it as well. That's really what the message of, of conspiracy theory is. Or angry about it or should know about it. Because like one of my friends says, you, you need to know these things because it's the truth. It's what's happening. And you need to know the truth because all the made, they you know, like this one person believes all the major news agencies are lying to us, you know? So, so you can't, you know, like the worst is CNN. And of course, Fox news isn't as bad in, in this person's opinion, but you know, all the others are really bad. And, <laughs> you know, the only person that's shaping the truth is Sean Hannity. And, you know, <laughs> you know seriously. No, and, I believe and, you. you know, yeah. There are a lot yeah. of people. On both yeah. sides. I mean, that, that you're describing the right, but the same is also true on the left with CNN. I mean, it's, this, it's yeah. the exact same oh, yeah. phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like when you put your focus on all these external things, making or breaking your reality, it's the same way that we do with if we believe that our kid or our spouse or our neighbor or our parent um, – isn't behaving the way we want them to. And mm -hmm. we want everybody to change so that we can feel better. And again, it's like, it's like changing external conditions so that you can eventually get your external world all in perfect order. And then you can say, now I can be happy and it, it ain't ever going to happen. No, no, it can't possibly it happen. Work. No. And the fact that there are so many bizarre things going on now and there, what I realize is I could spend the entire year, you know, studying, what I think the facts are. And there is no such thing any longer. There's just the holographic opinion of every single person looking at life through their particular lens, you know, and they're creating that. If you believe law of attraction, every person is creating their reality through their own hologram. And, uh, and then they believe it or they don't believe it, or, you know, they're, they're in peace with it or they're in turmoil about it. And, and then they look at other people's, you know, holograms and, and get into theirs, you know, and it's like, where's the peace of mind? You know, where is the stability? Where is the, where's the wisdom? Where's the true knowing, you know, and to me, it only exists inside of each one of us. I think you're right. And, and you described really nicely um, the typical reaction of the conspiracy theorist that the rest of us are, we have our heads buried in the sand. Um, we don't really appreciate how important this thing is that's going on. Um, this is reality. This is truth. It's not something that I'm terrified of. I'm, I'm, I'm angry about it. I'm taking action about it. That's, that's the typical expression of the conspiracy theorist. And, and what strikes me about it is that it, it's actually got a lie in there. The lie is I am angry about it. Not that I'm afraid of it. I'm angry about it. And this is the truth. Yeah. And both of those are really lies. They're lies right. because, first of all, they're they're deliberately trying to cover up the fact that they're terrified. 
They wouldn't be taking the, I mean, anger comes after. It doesn't come before being terrified. <laughs> the fear happens first, and then after yeah. you've taken the action to get away from the fear, then you get angry about it. But you don't get angry right. before you're afraid. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the anger comes after the fear. And the simple fact is they are omitting the fact that they were afraid of something, and so that got them angry. Mm -hmm. Well, in that way, they're really, they're not telling you the truth. <laughs> they, they think they are. They, they're certainly telling it from within their perspective. I mean, that's all they can really see is within their perspective. But nevertheless, they've, they've kind of forgotten where the whole thing originated inside themselves. Well, that's, I, I can't, I can't understand any other reason to be into having all these things be such a huge big deal where these, all these people are conspiring against us unless you are afraid you know mm -hmm. unless you do think well if you think that they're going to kill you or they're going to torture you or they're going to hurt you or they're going to hurt others by their actions so you feel it's your duty to um to name to call out and to find you know to find out the facts about what's really going on and so you, de you delve into all this stuff and then one fact so-called fact leads to another so-called fact and before long you've created a reality that then you're you're, you're convinced is that if this thing would change, you know, the earth could be a better place mm -hmm. or that, you know, people need to know um, that there's others that are conspiring against them like this. And because, you know, um, you're being, you're all being duped, you know, and, but then what's the bottom line of it all is that the person who's saying all that is really saying, I'm terrified that I'm going to suffer and die at the hands of these people. That's that's all I can figure. Or that these people are going to destroy our our planet. Um, but but all of it is based on the fact that that the actions of people are more powerful than the consciousness of source that is actually in control. Yeah. You know, well, well, and you said it yourself. It's because of fear. Fear, yeah. I mean, uh, from 12-step groups, they have the uh, acronym FEAR, F-E-A-R, standing for false evidence appearing real. That, mm -hmm. re that acronym really describes what fear is 99 times out of 100. I mean, yes, there is, there is fear that's based in reality if you are in the forest and a tiger spots you and starts chasing you. Now, that's fear that's actually based in reality. Like, you got to find a way to get away from that tiger or you're dead. Got it. Okay, fine. But the other 99 times don't have a tiger. <laughs> the other 99 mm -hmm. times, it's all in our heads. So 99 times out of 100, fear is false evidence appearing real. It's stuff that we put into our heads to make ourselves afraid, literally. And in the process of making ourselves afraid, we also created the conspiracy theory to get angry about so that we can start railing against it. But the mm -hmm. fear came first, and the fear came out of the false evidence. Mm-hmm. And and people don't realize, um, I think that's one really great thing about law of attraction, um, is uh, the understanding that what you're focusing on, you're getting more of all the time. And it, it's it just how that process works, um, you know, because <clears throat> that's why things can seem so real. Like mm -hmm. like we were talking before the show about how I, I can take my um, – my concerns about what's going on in my life and focus on them from a, a variety of perspectives. And some of those perspectives, um, like for example, if I say I've got a big problem and then my big problem, if I keep saying I've got a big problem and I don't know how to fix it. Okay. Uh, or I need to fix it, or I have a big problem and what I'm doing is not working to solve it. Um, or I've got a big problem and I've had it, seems like maybe I've had it my whole life and I've got to go back and find the causes of this. And I've got to do $2,000 worth of therapy, you know, to figure this out, you know, and all of that hinges on one thing and that in, in at least the way I'm seeing it and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, hmm. but it's that it's the continual focus on it, it and saying that I have a big problem for, mm -hmm. for one. And then, putting focus and focus and focus and focus on it, right. reading books about it, talking to therapists about it, everything. Okay. Well then it's going to become a real issue. It's going to become, it's going to grow legs. It's going to have teeth. It's going to like, it's going to be a powerful it's force true. in your life because you built it, you know, and you built it with your attention to it. But if you had put that same energy 
you know, into, into your well-being and your alignment with source and saying, you know, well, I may have some things going on, but I know that, that it, these things can all work out and that they can work out really well and they can work out a lot easier than I think. And I don't need to have, you know, create a problem in order to solve a problem. You know, I just need to go towards the solution and this thing can dissipate. You know, this, this cancer I have can dissipate if I focus more and more on, on the good feelings that I need to have. I, how, I mean, do I need to feel how bad I feel about the cancer for it to go away? Or do I need to feel how good it would how it would feel if I was healthy and remember how good it felt when I was healthy and remember how good it feels when I eat well and how good it feels when I'm happy. And I think I'll go watch a movie that lifts me up rather than one that makes me depressed, you know? Um, it's just choices, right? A it lot is. Of it. Oh, it, all of it. The whole thing is. I would I would agree with you entirely. Um, and, 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 of course, the easiest time to go after something like that, the, quick, the, the time when it's easiest to – quickly turn it around is back in the fear stage when you're first starting to fear feel fearful before you even get to anger i mean if you can catch right. it that early then it's it's actually fairly easy to turn it around you can find those right. good feeling thoughts a whole lot quicker the right. more that we've built it up the more like any belief the belief is a thought you think over and over again so the more that we built up the belief in that fear and turn it into an anger and turn it into a conspiracy theory and turn it into a disease and turn it into everything else the more that we do that, the harder it is to turn around because there's all this you know, huge amount of momentum built up. Louise and I were talking about that last night because even before I went to bed, I was still not I was not feeling really great. And of course, you know, by the time middle of the night came, I was feeling really miserable. Um, mm -hmm. But before we went to bed, we were talking about the fact that we build up this this negative crap over a lifetime. I mean, there's a whole lot of it that we build up and, you know, expecting all of it to just instantly reverse probably isn't entirely, you know, the, our best our best tack. It's not like it can't reverse. It's just that we've got a whole lot of momentum we're reversing. And, yeah. you know, the fact is those of us who are practicing being deliberate creators, practicing applying the law of attraction are reversing it. Maybe not as fast as we would like to, but we are reversing it. How do you reverse it faster? By focusing more often on the stuff that feels good. And, you know, do we all do that? No, that, that's what I was noticing. Tom, that's what I realized last night. I have not been focusing enough on the stuff that feels good to me. Even yeah. even with doing two podcasts a day. And let me tell you, these podcasts are great. They feel so good to me. But even uh -huh. with doing those, I still, during the rest of my day, allow myself to go into those bad feeling, fear-based, scary places about, oh, God, nothing's working out. This isn't going to work out the way I want. I mean, holy crow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. I have all this good mm -hmm. energy I build up, and then I still periodically throw it away, mm -hmm. you know? And that's well, like it's like a conspiracy theory in your head. Yeah, right. You know, exactly. That, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm conspiring against myself, or life is conspiring against me, or these circumstances are conspiring against me, or whatever it is, you know? And it's it's like there's a different thing we could do with our energy, and that's why the I went whole to think. That's why I went to the mirror exercises because yeah. I knew that this was ne this was me not being kind to me. Mm -hmm. That's really what was at the root of all my angst, all my anxiety. In fact, Joel pointed out something uh, to me yesterday during my uh, podcast with him yesterday morning that I really liked. I had never mm -hmm. heard this before. I don't know why I never heard for, ever heard this. Maybe you have. But he told me about um, – yesterday's podcast was, was about a talk he gives periodically three or four times a year to chambers of commerce and private groups and corporations uh -huh. and so forth. Uh, uh -huh. The topic is um, the power of your, inner, of your dialogue with your inner being. And mm -hmm. in the course of giving that talk, um, he, of course, he's gotten better and better at it over time. But early on, like the first or second time he gave the talk, he was at an event where there was another speaker in front of him. The other speaker came back and sat down, and while he's being introduced, the other speaker saying to him, you look kind of nervous. And he, and he says, yeah, it's like my f second time doing this. I feel like really, really anxious, anxious, a lot of anxiety. And the speaker says, well, you know, anxiety is just a negative form of excitement. When you're feeling anxiety, you're feeling excitement, but you're feeling bad about it. Just, <laughs> just understand that what you're feeling is excitement and get excited. So the first mm -hmm. thing Joel did when he got up was to say, I feel really excited to be here <laughs> yeah, and you know, really. kind of harness it into a positive direction. But yeah, it's yeah. true. It's no, true. It's that true. anxiety thing is it's good excitement that we've turned into a bad feeling. Mm. So when, last night when I was feeling anxious, that's what I realized. I was turning anxiety. I was turning excitement into anxiety. I was turning it into a bad thing. Well, that meant I was not being kind to myself. I was, I was actually being rather mean to myself. 
because mm-hmm. I was doing it, right? I'm the one who's t- taking this great energy I'm feeling and turning it in- into angst. Mm-hmm. That's why I started doing the mirror exercises, the I love you exercises, the I appreciate you exercise, because I needed to hear from myself, I'm really okay. I'm a good person. I'm lovable. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doing good stuff. I, I deserve to t- take the pressure off myself. I deserve to give myself credit, you know, all that kind of thing. And that's yeah. what allowed me to go to sleep because I finally was able to relax and say, oh, good. On some on a subconscious level, I just felt better because I did that. I gave, basically gave myself a way out of beating myself up. Hmm. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to recognize that how much choice we always have um, as to even if we're looking at something that seems like we don't like the contrast we're in, the contrast we're in seems troubling or it seems – uh, problematic. It seems like, wow, I've been here before. I don't like this place. I, why do I create this place? And at the same time that we're experiencing that kind of angst, we have the opportunity in those same moments to be telling ourselves the other messages as well. We could also be saying, yeah, but I also know that I also know that things are well and that, you know, there, that this universe is a very powerful, um, solution that it's not it's not designed as a giant problem and i know that i can i can hook into the energy i can align with my source with my infinite self i can align with all the help i have in the unseen realm and i could i can feel i can have trust in this life and that it's really not designed to for me to end up totally screwed over um i could end up really doing well in this situation even though right now i'm feeling afraid or I'm feeling lost or I'm feeling hopeless, but you know, that can change. So I'm finding that in the midst of, of um, negative emotion, it, it's the question is, do I want to add more feel to the fire of this negativity or do I want to, you know, give myself some hope in the midst of this negative? Well, that's just it. I mean, we, we, you said it yourself. I can change. Well, more precisely, do I choose to change? Yeah. You know, or, or, or will I keep it as like this abstract idea? Well, I could change. You know, that doesn't really help you a whole lot. You know, are you well, going to actually do it? Are you going to yeah. take the steps? And, and you know what the right, steps right. are. We talk about them all the time on the podcast. We all know what the steps are. Are we going to do it or not? Do or do not. There is no try. Right. But we have to be, I mean, I find that I have to be also loving with myself. I can't, I mean, there's, there's a little bit well, of exactly. a thing in law of attraction, you know, where, you almost could be beating yourself up for not being good enough at love. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's, why the first step is to love yourself. It has to be the first step. I agree completely. That's what I was not doing. I was not loving myself. (laughs) That's why I got, that's why I woke up in the middle of the night. (laughs) Right, 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 right. And, but even, even when I feel entrapped by my own mind, I just, I just have to like, in a way, just go, it's not real. You know, it's just, it's Mm. just, I don't, I don't give it, enough energy for it to become a big problem. Um, you know, they say that, that when a person is like on a psychedelic plant substance and they're on that journey, you know, it can be very terrifying at times. And the thing that makes it terrifying is when you buy into the thing your mind is telling you or the, the pictures your mind is showing you that are fearful and you buy into it. And then you, you start to believe that those things are going to last forever or that they're going to consume you, you know? Um, but, but in a way it's sort of like we were talking about once about the guy who was doing the out of body experience. And when he got to the top of the stairs, when he was out of his body, he, he knew there was something terrifying at the bottom of the stairs that was going to devour him. And so he, he had a tendency to want to run and go back into his body, which was laying in the bed, not far from him. And instead, he just stood at the top of the stairs and let this thing come up. And when it got right to him, it he, it just it just just disappeared, you know. And he realized it was a figment of his imagination. It was his fear. It wasn't a real thing. It was false evidence appearing real. And um, and so, I think I think that I have to, in my life today, you know, make make the the decision to allow myself to be in that place where I just don't buy into the various avenues that say you're, you're going, you're going to be destroyed by this or you're going to be overwhelmed by this, you know, cause I have oh, exactly. some things exactly. coming up in my life today that I feel could be really challenging, but they could also be just dealt with, with that kind of faith that, 
everything is okay if I just back away from the edge and don't don't believe that devastation is possible. You know, I, I just don't. I just don't buy into it. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's really fun and in, in kind of a, a I don't know a step back way. It's kind of fun to watch yourself and your own reactions when you allow that 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 horrible force to come up the stairway. I had that happen yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I've told our listeners how. Uh, for the last few months, I've been trying to work with programmers to get this software written for uh, the gardening business. And I went through one programmer. He, he said he was going to get it done in a month. And two and a half months later, it wasn't anywhere close to being done. So I ended up firing him. Hired another person and hired them in the end of June. And they, were, they said they're going to get their thing done in two weeks. Well, 40 days later, <laughs> it still wasn't done. I, they gave mm -hmm. me a demo of, of what they had and not, none of it worked right. It was all mm -hmm. bad. And uh -huh. so I ended up firing that person yesterday and uh -huh. you should have seen the invective that person threw at me. Oh, I was, really? I was not a real man. I'm not masculine. She, it was a female programmer. Um, I'm a horrible human being. I'm a dangerous man. I'm uh, all these terrible things she was saying about me. And I'm just wow. sitting back there kind of like with a little distance saying, well, that's really interesting. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't accepting any of it. I mean, uh -huh. I, I was not internalizing a single thing that she said because, and it was easy not to internalize it because she'd done such a terrible job with the programming. It was really, really bad. I mean, yeah. the, you, you, you got this, she was supposed to create this interface that had these various things going on. You play the interface and nothing was there. That's how bad it was. It, it's not like it, it sort of worked. It didn't work at all. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was oh, just wow. really, really bad. So it was yeah. not difficult to, to say you're fired. Uh -huh. And because of that, I, I could kind of create the little distance and just watch her just flailing at me and thinking, wow, she really thinks that's going to work, too. I mean, she really does believe that. Uh -huh. And it wasn't working at all because, uh -huh. well, I just I, I had created that little bit of distance in my mind. But I could see how if I had kind of bought into it, maybe fought back or so forth, I could turn that into a huge fight. You know, it, yeah, it yeah. came down to my choice. It came down to which way did I want to feel about it? Did I want to buy into her angst? Or did I want to feel better? And on that particular occasion, it was a really easy decision. I just wanted to feel better. I didn't want to have anything to do with her angst. I had enough of her angst. I had 40 days of her angst. I didn't know. I did not want any more. Yeah, just not engaging sometimes with um, the thing that is threatening to us. Or, I mean, I can even watch myself, for example, be um, be sad or be angry, but don't be that engaged with it, you know, like re recognize it as well that I see this as an emotional expression and, but I, but I don't, I don't need to um, take it as like, this is overwhelming to me. And that this means now that all, all of my good is gone, you know, or that all of the progress I've made has been wiped out by this or, you know, that sometimes we add fuel to the fire. I think I add fuel to the fire of my own, um, situation that could be actually treated in an opposite way. A lot of times it could be treated by, I love that way that Abraham does that all the time in there. When they have somebody up there, they're talking to, they'll talk to them in a way to begin from wherever that person's at to make bridges into hopefulness, mm. you know, to like all these little statements you can make to yourself, you know, that say, Oh, well, you know, at least, at least I know that, that I'm, you know, that I can feel better. I know, I know that well-being abounds. I know that, you know, everything really is always working out for me. And, you know, we don't have to kid ourselves, but we can begin to ask ourselves, is that true? You know, is it true that well-being does abound? Do I still believe that? Mm. Or do I, you know, what, what do we know that we can have faith in that we can begin to walk in the direction towards the light, you know, towards the possibility, towards the hope, you know, because like, the saying is that if you just have hope and a little bit of belief, you can open the door to the things that you want to have happen in your life. But if we're in that place where we just don't have the hope and we, and we're giving up on believing that it's possible, then we're going to just add more to our misery, you know, because we're opening the door to our misery, you, you know, to things not working out. You touched on something too, that I want to address and I've wanted to address for a long time. And I kept forgetting about it. If you mm -hmm. just have a little bit of hope, now the, the mustard seed approach, right? Yeah. And that approach is true. If you have just a little hope, just a mustard seed worth of faith, then things can happen. Mm -hmm. But, 
And this is a really important but, in my opinion. This is why I've wanted to bring this up. Mm -hmm. When we are limiting, and I use that word advisedly, when we are limiting ourselves to just a little bit of hope, what we are doing is stretching out the amount of time it's going to take for it to happen. Well, that's true. And that's the part that bothers me about all you need is a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. I think it's true that all you need is a mustard seed if you have the patience of Job. Well, and if you're in a place of great um, hopelessness, I mean, I've been there enough to know that just the smallest amount of hope is so important to have. It is. At the time when you're feeling hopeless. Yep, no doubt about that. But the simple fact is most of us aren't hopeless most of the time. Right. And yet we hang on to, we cling to, all I need is a mustard seed, even when we're not in hopelessness. And my point is we are doing ourselves a disservice when we settle for so little. Okay. On those occasions where we, yes, if it's, if it's an occasion where all we can reach for is a little tiny bit of hope, then by mm -hmm. all means, reach for a tiny little bit of hope. But most of the time, we can reach farther than that. Most of the time, we can apply ourselves more. We can uh, be more determined. We can you know, apply our will. We can, well, and, and we can do it with more, uh, more belief. We, we can build the belief. We can build the belief stronger. We can do more to build the belief. But we settle for the mustard seed. I'm yeah, saying, yeah. why are we settling? Right. Sometimes we can step completely into that place of faith and, and knowing that mm -hmm. everything is, is okay. It's, it always was okay. It's going to, it is okay. And it's going to be okay. Um, and stepping into that place, it's becomes a practice. I think, I think we get yes. good at stepping into that place of knowing that, you know, the devastating things that we think are so big are really not unless we decide that they are. Yes. And that by, by the same token, the things that we could believe in that are hopeful and that are wonderful and that are powerful and beautiful and loving and, you know, that we could have a whole lot more um, ability to just jump into that seat of knowing that that really it's possible to, to become skilled, right. At, at being, at going immediately to that place of resolution or of hope or of possibility and, and just a clear knowing that, that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I'm going to be okay. Even though there's a monster staring me in the face, I was like, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Everything's really not what it appears. Mm -hmm. you know, things, things actually work out. That's how that, that's how life is designed. But you, I feel like that's the bottom line for me. I have to know for with out a shadow of a doubt that everything is designed to work out. This isn't designed to be a, a place of loss and loss and loss and loss. You know, I guess that's where the, the Indian cliche from the movie, the best exotic marigold hotel comes in. Everything will be all right in the end. And if it's not yet all right, it's not yet the end. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, there's that too. Well, I think, it's, I, I, think, I, think every... it's, I think it's the driving factor in what you just described. Because even uh, you, you talked about how you, wanted, how you need to have you know, this really almost perfect belief in it that you built up. Well, if you, even if the, the belief hasn't completely been built up, even if you aren't seeing the result yet, it just means you haven't reached the end of, of this particular trip yet. Mm -hmm. You just haven't gotten yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, and then like Abraham said so much, the whole key to this whole thing is relax and enjoy your journey and trust that it's being orchestrated by a exactly. loving force. Exactly. And that your journey is actually, yeah, you might be in contrast right now, but you're on a journey. You're in an initiation. You could say you're, you're going through something, but it's going to, you're going to come out the other side. That's the beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. you're go and you're going to be, and you're going to be the better person for it because you learned by being in that contrasting situation, you learn more what you don't want, more what you do want. And now you've got even a greater awareness of what it is you really want in your life. And that's the whole game of the contrast. It really is. Yeah. So the question now is how are we going to address that contrast? How are we going to, and relate with it. Are we going to continue to, to victimize ourselves? Are we going to believe in conspiracy theories? Are we going to believe that the world is conspiring against us? Or are we going to decide to take control of our own thought process? It's really one or the other. Right. And are we going to look in the situations even outside of us for where is the 
where is the beauty here? You know, like if, if I'm with another person and that in the eyes of source, that other person is, is incredible and I don't see their incredibleness. Well, in a way, I'm just not seeing through the eyes of source. And I could take a step back from my close scrutiny of them and their judgment I'm putting on them and take a step back and see, see a bigger picture of it and, and be in a place of openness and, and forgiveness and willingness to, to see them in the way source might see them mm-hmm. um, and to see my own life that way. You know, if, if this contrast is on my path right now, well, then I must be putting it on my path for some really good reason because I'm orchestrating this with my infinite self with source. So there must be something that I'm doing here that is, that is unfolding the next step in my journey. It's just an unfolding in the next step of my journey. And even though I'm blinded right now by the, this level of contrast, um, I'm, it, it, there's something, there's like a, a pony hidden in this room all full of <laughs> horseshit. You know, right. it's like there's a pony buried in there somewhere. I'm going to keep digging <laughs> or I'm going to, I'm going to let the pony, you know, somehow show itself to me because, yeah, it takes faith, though, doesn't it? I mean, it takes faith that that's the way it is. Well, it, it takes faith, but it also takes application. It's both. Yeah. I mean, if you try to apply yourself without any smidgen of faith, you're going to be spinning your wheels for a while. If you're going to try to use faith but not apply yourself in any way, you're going to be spinning your wheels for a while. <laughs> but if you do both, you're going to spin your wheels a whole lot faster. You're going to get traction a whole lot quicker. Exactly. Like, if you're going to go watch the sad movie the depressing movie, the, the the movie full of violence, and that compared to the movie full of things you'd rather experience in your life, it's going to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And that's the way we treat ourselves. You know, what what's the movie that we're creating in our lives and what's a better feeling movie and what's a better feeling story we could be telling ourselves or we could be creating. And um, so it, it really does – it really is a lot in our control and it is a lot having faith that if we're watch, if we're in the bad movie, you know, it's, it can, it can morph, it can change. It can come to a better feeling movie. Yeah, right? it certainly can. Absolutely. Yes. By the way, speaking of better feeling movies, um, this is kind of a weird segue. I know, but uh, this week, <laughs> this week I've been pushing the idea of let, let's do a little experiment. I've been asking people who are our regular listeners, the regular subscribers who listen to all of our episodes and who we love so dearly because of that. I've been asking them to uh, start posting on their social media in Facebook or Twitter or whatever else they use, just fo- posting something that includes the phrase LOAToday.net. And I can tell you, we're already starting to see improvement in numbers. I mean, there's, there's been a definite surge toward the end of this week that I'm sure is coming because of that. Because I look at all the other factors that I can look at that tells me, you know, where traffic has come from. None of them are really changing much at all. But nevertheless, the numbers are increasing. And that tells me that there are a tiny percentage of our listeners who are regular listeners who are doing it. They're posting. They're saying, hey, you know, LOAToday.net and whatever it is they want to say about it. And so I'm asking the rest of our listeners, please join in because we really need to have as many of our listeners doing this as we possibly can. The more of us who do it, the more other people who find out about the podcast, the more the podcast grows. And as the audience grows, the more we can do with it. I mean, right now we're doing uh, 11 shows a week, which is really about the most we can do. We're, we're really kind of pushed. Um, you know, we don't have a budget or anything like that. And we've got some really dedicated people, but uh, we need to have the bigger audience so we can get more things done. So, and plus, it's it's of such benefit for the people who do listen. So everybody, please just take a moment and, and go to your favorite social media outlet and just say something about LOAToday.net. Make sure you include the .net. And you know, the more that we do that, I'm going to be watching over the next week to, to, tell, to see what happens. And as it happens, I'll be reporting it, letting everybody know just how much it's working. It is working. I can see already. I can see the curve happening. But um, Tom, this has been great. Awesome. Uh, it's been a wonderful uh, discussion, and I hope you have a great weekend. I look forward to talking yeah. to you on Monday. I hope you do too, Walt. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And we'll yeah. see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.